What is the best cellular carrier for RVing and cruising in the United States? We've got an early 2023 update on the four nationwide carriers in the United States. Hi there, I'm Cherie with the Mobile Internet Resource Center where we track options for mobile internet for RVers and cruisers. And of course, cellular connectivity is one of the popular ways that we keep online in our travels. Now, at present time, there are four nationwide cellular carriers. You're probably familiar with Verizon, T-Mobile, and AT&T. There is now a fourth dish wireless that is also deploying their network. Now, of those big three ones, Verizon, T-Mobile, and AT&T, at present time, spoiler alert, there isn't a single best one. For most of us that need to keep connected in our travels, we're going to want to choose not which carrier, but which carriers are in our mobile internet arsenal to keep best connected. Because as you look at the big scale of their coverage maps, they all have a great coverage map across the country that will keep you connected most of the time. It's when you zoom in and you see that they have minor variations as to where they cover as you get localized. Heck, even inside of one single campground, one carrier may work better at one site versus a site across the way. That's how localized cellular coverage can get. So when it comes down to it, redundancy is your best option with cellular internet so that you can try different carriers at each location, even combine them together to see if you can get the best connection. Now, there are some technologies I'm gonna give you an overview of here first. That is LTE, that is the carrier coverage that was very prominent in the 2010s. It is still viable today and will be into the future. And all of the carriers have a pretty widespread network of their LTE networks. Now we're in a 5G era in the 2020s. There are three flavors of 5G technology. First is long range. And this is basically using the LTE spectrum that all the carriers have laid out. It's going to be their long range 5G coverage. And most of the carriers have built that out by now. There'll probably still be some expansions into the future. The other one you're probably familiar with is a millimeter wave. That is the ultra short range, ultra fast. This is mostly going to be used in small areas that need a lot of capacity, like stadiums and airports, where you have a lot of people in a small area. That is not the sort of 5G coverage that most of us RVers and cruisers are going to encounter in our daily lives. It's the mid-range technology that is where the sweet spot is at the higher speeds, new technology, and long range, like a mile or two from the cellular towers. This is where the carriers are putting a lot of their efforts into expanding their networks at present time, where we're going to see a lot of growth in the years to come. So that's where you want to focus on is what your cellular carrier's pro pro projection is going forward in 5G. Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center. And now that you understand kind of the basics of the three types of technology that the cellular carriers are deploying, it's now really important to understand the differences between the carriers, because even though their coverage maps might look kind of similar at a high level, how they're deploying all this technology behind the scenes differs a lot per carrier. And when you're shopping for gear, it's really important to understand what is going on behind the scenes. So first off, let's start with T-Mobile because unlike in the LTE era, in the 5G era, T-Mobile is actually the leader. They've been the one pushing the technology the furthest. They've been the first to deploy 5G to the broadest area, particularly this next generation mid-band 5G that has really truly next generation performance. On T-Mobile's network, they call it 5G ultra capacity, and it is using 5G band N41, and now they're starting to use band N25 as well to kind of supplement this and turbocharge their network. And then their nationwide, their long range 5G, which they were also a leader on, is using band N71. So that is a band that gives them the long range, and then bands N25 and N41 give them that mid-range speed that still layers on top of that. So it's a, you know, T-Mobile's got a pretty exciting and pretty well deployed 5G network, but they are still evolving a lot and doing things that let them combine the bands in more and more creative ways to bring that speed and coverage to more people. So T-Mobile is the carrier to watch in 5G. Okay, next up is Verizon. And Verizon was kind of the leader in the 4G world and the first to bring 4G LTE out to the broader world. And, but they're taking kind of an intentional follower position in 5G. And they even acknowledged T-Mobile's head start saying, 
by 2024, a Verizon executive was saying, by 2024, uh, the Verizon giant will have awakened. Okay. But, but that doesn't mean Verizon's network is anything to scoff at now. They've actually spent the last year of um, 2022 and into 2023 deploying a whole lot of C-band spectrum on band N77 that has really taken their 5G network in a lot of urban and suburban areas to a really impressive place with some really great performance. And they've got a lot more to come ahead. So Verizon, great network. They're on a great trajectory. And uh, just pay attention to where that um, mid-band has rolled out. Their 5G nationwide network, their uh, low-band stuff, not much to write home about, nothing to really care about, but their mid-band is expanding rapidly. So pay attention to where that is growing on the maps. Okay, next up is AT&T. And AT&T, as we stand, is kind of playing big time catch up when it comes to truly transformative next generation 5G. They've got their 5G nationwide and their fake 5G, they call 5GE, which is actually 4G, has great coverage all over the place, but their truly next generation 5G network, which they call 5G plus on millimeter wave and their mid-band spectrum is really just starting to get deployed here in early 2023. And they are in a distant third to T-Mobile and Verizon when it comes to this. So with comes to AT&T, you don't really need to worry so much quite yet about having 5G gear. But if you do have 5G gear on AT&T, you really, really want to make sure it's the latest generation of gear. You know, Qualcomm X62 and X65 modem generations, which only started being sold in 2022, have compatibility that will be essential for this, this future mid-band that AT&T is starting to roll out. So AT&T, they've got a great 4G network. They've done a really good job on that. But when it comes to 5G, make sure you have the latest hardware or you really will be missing out and having kind of a no better than 4G experience on AT&T. Next up is DISH Network. Now, DISH is a new nationwide network that was basically given Spectrum that uh, T-Mobile had to relinquish when they bought Sprint. So DISH was enabled by the federal government to be take Sprint's place as the new nationwide fourth carrier, but they are still just getting started with their Project Genesis is one brand. They're going to have Boost Mobile is another brand, but they're still just getting started. So they've got an advantage that they're starting from scratch. They're going to have the first 5G native network with no LTE underneath it, which is great on one hand, but it means they don't have a lot of towers or a lot of coverage to start with here. So they've got a long way to go. In the meantime, Dish does have roaming deals with T-Mobile and AT&T, so you can get coverage as you go other places. But it's very important to pay attention to where that Dish native coverage is, which is still just beginning to spill out into cities. They've got a promising future, but they are in distant fourth place. And when it comes to the technical side of things, they are using some oddball spectrum different from some of the other cellular carriers. They're using Spectrum N71 that T-Mobile uses for their initial network and some um, band N66 as well. Oh. Going forward, they're using other bands like N70 and N29 that no other carriers are. So pay attention to hardware that is optimized for DISH and is DISH native so that you'll be guaranteed to have the best coverage as DISH starts to turn on their network in more and more places. Again, it's a carrier to watch. They're definitely a great value, but they are in very distant fourth place when it comes to raw 5G coverage. Okay, so you may have also heard about some other carrier names out there that are not nationwide carriers, or they are riding on the backbone of those carriers we just talked about. First, there are regional carriers. You might be familiar with US Cellular. They are a regional carrier. They have coverage maps that only natively cover some pockets of the country, and then you are roaming the rest of the time. That might make sense if you're traveling in those areas that have native coverage, but they do have roaming allotments that will cut you off eventually if you're outside of that home area too often. There are other smaller regional carriers across the nation that you might encounter, but again, they're going to be focused on just a small area of the country. There are also a lot of other brand names out there. You might be familiar with Cricket, Metro, uh, Visible, these are all prepaid subsidiary names of the major carriers. So they're the same carrier, they're just running a different marketing name and a different marketing network to get those plans out, but they are on the base carrier that they belong to. There are also MVNOs. These are companies that are officially authorized by the carriers to resell service on their network. And you'll actually see that name on there. Some examples are like consumer cellular. And then there are also other carriers out there that combine uh, multiple networks into one, or they claim to be able to combine multiple networks into one device. You might be familiar with Google Fi. They 
combine T-Mobile and U.S. Cellular onto your phone or devices. There are others out there that are claiming they sell you a little uh, hotspot device that they say will connect you to whatever carrier is best in the area you're at. Usually it's whatever carrier is best for their uh, budget and they swap the carrier behind the scenes for you. There's also resellers out there. These are companies that may or may not have an official agreement with the carriers to resell service, and those are very hit or miss. Just go in eyes wide open that those options will work until they don't, but they will usually kind of tell you what carrier they're on by the color of the plan, like blue for AT&T, red for Verizon. And then there is also something to consider, Starlink, which is not a cellular technology. It is a satellite internet service that comes from space. But for some people, it becomes a really great complement to cellular to give them more connectivity, more bandwidth, more data to play with. But some people ask, is it time to replace cellular as my primary data uh, connection with Starlink? And no, not usually, particularly if you're in traveling places where there are uh, trees or obstructions or you have setup concerns. Starlink is usually not your best only connection, but becomes a really, really great complement to cellular, whether you have one or two or even three additional cellular plans, combine that with Starlink and you end up with a really, really robust system. And of course, selecting your cellular carrier is not the only consideration. You also need to select what your data plan is, what equipment you're going to be using, as well as your signal enhancing strategy like boosters and antennas. And that's what we focus on over at the Mobile Internet Resource Center. And we offer a ton of free content helping you navigate this. We have gear center entries and educational guides, and we are all member supported. All of this is made possible by our premium members and for that they go further they get interactive guidance they get discounts from some of the vendors they get more in-depth content and they get testing notes and reviews of the gear that we have had hands-on time with so if mobile internet is an important part of your lifestyle do consider becoming a member help us make this possible and we can help you more until next time may the bandwidth be with you these videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.